Hi, I'm uh, I'm in here for Dylan, and what I'm doing is a uh, lesson on 7.3, which is absolute value equations. Now, if you can recall from junior high, when you were given an equation like 4x, 4x plus let's say 7 equals 7 or equals 15. If you had to solve this, you went through the steps so that you could determine what the value of x is and from here you obviously checked your answer by verifying into the equation. Now an absolute value equation has basically the same steps except what we're going to do here is start off with an absolute value equation that would look something like this. So what we have here is the absolute value of x minus 3 is equal to 7 and the simplest way to solve this is we look at it from both sides and I'll explain what this means. In replacing these absolute value we'll use circular brackets but we look at it from the positive side and we also have to look at it from the negative side. So basically that's what you're doing here. You're looking at it from the positive side and from the negative side. Now distributing into the brackets here, when you multiply by positive 1, nothing changes here. So you will add 3 to get an answer of x equals 10. Okay. And in here we must as always verify our answers. So replacing this 10 back in the original equation, we get the absolute value of 7, which is equal to 7, so this answer checks out. On the other side, you will distribute this in to get negative x plus 3 equals 7. Negative x, if we minus 3 from both sides, gives me 4, and x would be equal to negative 4. Okay. Checking, again, we, we must verify. So negative 4 minus 3 equals 7. The absolute value of negative 7 equals 7, and this is true as well. So both answers will work in this case. Another way of, of solving the equation is if you were required to use it using your calculator or using a graph. Now, in the original function, we had absolute value of x minus 3 equals 7. And on your graphing, what you would do is break this, this part into, you would put as y1, and this part you would put into your calculator as y2. So in your calculator, you would graph the absolute value of x minus 3 as y1, and as y2, you would graph the, the 7 value. Now, when you do that on your calculator, you are basically going to see a graph that looks somewhat like this right here. If you can see, this is on page 382. And what you would do is where those two lines intersect indicate the various solutions to the graph. So you will get a graph that looks like this. And those two areas indicate those are your solutions. Okay, where they intersect. And you would use the intersect function on your graph. But most of the equations that you are done in this unit are done algebraically. So I'll try and show you another couple examples here. Now, in this example, we're taking a look at the absolute value of 2x minus 5 equals to 5 minus 3x. And again, we will look at it from both sides of the equation. One from the positive side. Okay, and one from the negative side. Okay, distributing, nothing changes in the, with the positive. Okay, so all I'm going to do is add 3x. I'm just solving this like a linear equation. 
that'll give me 5x minus 5 equals 5. Adding 5 gives me 5x equals 10. And dividing by 5 gives me an answer of x equals 2. Again, I would have to verify this. So you would replace it in the original equation. So 4 minus the absolute value of 4 minus 5, which is the absolute value of negative 1, which is 1. On the left side, on the right side, you get 5 minus 6. 5 minus 6 is negative 1. And this is not equal. And as a result, x is not equal to 2. This is not a solution in this question. This is why it's important that you must verify. Now, if we check the other side, this would be negative 2x plus 5 if I distribute is equal to 5 minus 3x. Adding 3x to both sides gives me x plus 5 equals 5. Subtracting 5 gives me an answer of x equals 0. Now, again, let's verify or check the answers. Okay, from the original, so it's 2 times 0 minus 5 equals 5 minus 3 times 0. This will be the absolute value of negative 5 is equal to 5, and this checks out. So as a result, the only acceptable answer is x equals 0. Our last example looks it's a, you know, a little more complicated, but it's basically done exactly the same way. So it's just that you got to be careful when you're going through this. Again, we look at it from the positive side. So this would be a positive x minus 10 is equal to x squared minus 10x. So this would be x minus 10 is equal to x squared minus 10x. Now, if you recall, for solving any quadratics, you're going to make them equal to 0. So I'm going to get everything on the left side equal to the right side which would be x squared, if I minus an x, be minus 11x plus 10. Okay. If we factor this, this will be x minus 10, x minus 1, and as a result, x would be equal to 10 and 1. Now, because there are two answers, you are going to have to verify both of them. So if I replace the first one, so 10 minus 10 is equal to 10 squared minus 10 times 10. Okay, absolute value of 0 is equal to 100 minus 100. So 0 is equal to 0. So 10 checks out. For the next one, I'll check if x equals 1. So 1 minus 10 is equal to 1 squared minus 10 times 1. This is negative 9, absolute value of negative 9 is the 1 minus 10. So 9 is not equal to negative 9. So the only acceptable answer is x equals 10. Now, if we go from the positive or the negative side, so it will be negative 1 times x minus 10 is equal to x squared minus 10x. It would be negative x plus 10 is equal to x squared minus 10x. So adding an x and subtracting a 10, adding an x and subtracting a 10 gives me x squared minus 9x minus 10. When we factor this, this will be x minus 10, x plus 1. So the answers to this from solving quadratics will be x is equal to 10 and negative 1. Now, we've already checked 10, so we know that works. So the only one we're checking is the x equals negative 1. Now, remember, we go back to our original. So negative 1 minus 10, the absolute value of negative 1 minus 10 is equal to negative 1 squared minus 10 times negative 1. This will give me negative 11, the absolute value of negative 11, 1 minus 10 would give me 1 plus 10, so this would be 11 is equal to 11, therefore it works. So the second answer is negative 1, and those would be the, the answers to this solution. Pretty simple. Okay, just remember you have to do it from both sides 
and work your way algebraically and be careful, but you must always verify or check your answers.